can we live forever? We've been raised with the belief that death is inevitable, and so during our lives we consider the legacy of what each of us leaves behind. But what if you had unlimited time to pursue your life's work, your hobbies, and your dreams? What if you didn't have to die? As science and medicine advances, the average human lifespan continues to increase from better care and medicines that treat diseases. Some scientists say that in the near future, perhaps within the next 50 years, immortality might be within our grasp. To begin to understand the aging process, we have to look at the laws of physics. There are four laws of thermodynamics, and the second law of thermodynamics basically implies that everything made up of atoms rusts, falls apart, or disintegrates. We are all made up of atoms, and those atoms must obey the second law of thermodynamics. But this doesn't mean that the law cannot be interfered with or changed. In fact, there is no law of physics that prevents us from finding the secret to living forever, or stopping and reversing entropy. Entropy can be interpreted as the degree of disorder or randomness in the system. Nothing is immune to the power of entropy, not even our bodies. Everything in the universe has the tendency to go from order to a decline into disorder. As we grow old, our own cells begin to betray us. If scientists find a way to reverse the damage that occurs normally to our cells, this could be the key to eternal life. We must take a closer look into our bodies on the cellular level. For a cell to remain youthful, it has to maintain the ability to detect and repair DNA damage, keep up its energy production, dispose of its waste, send out the right chemical messages, stay attached to other cells, and do many other things. Diseases of aging are associated with the failure of the DNA repair mechanisms. Our cells are very complex, but in each one of our cells, you will find what are called mitochondria. There are hundreds of these in each cell. You could consider these as tiny engines inside of each cell. The job of mitochondria is to provide energy to the body, and as with anything that produces energy, they become worn down after time. It is the beginning of this stage that our bodies start to decay. This is where some scientists have begun to research and are trying to reverse the process. One scientist by the name of Walter Longo performed some experiments with baker's yeast, the simple single-celled microorganisms that cause bread to rise and beer to ferment. By removing two genes from its DNA, he was able to increase the lifespan of yeast to 10 weeks by reversing the deterioration process. That is 10 times the normal 6-day lifespan of yeast. It might not seem like a lot, but it's the equivalent of 800 human years. He then performed the same experiment on mice, and by removing the same two genes, the result was that it doubled their life expectancy. In case you didn't know, it might be worth to mention that scientists test on mice because their genetic blueprints are similar to ours, and 90% of genes associated with diseases are identical in humans and mice. As far as our current longevity is concerned, it seems that humans have a hard ceiling of living to 115 years old. It's possible that this age limit is biologically wired into our system, but there was one woman who lived to be 122 years old. Her name was Jean Louise Skelment, and after she died, Many people said that it wouldn't be long until people were living to be 125 or 130 years old. But no one has lived that long since she died in 1997. It would seem that the average longest living human age is in fact 115 years. There are many unanswered questions that still remain. If we extended our lifespan, would our bodies be able to withstand living 800 to 1000 years? At the current state of research, we're only learning how to extend the lifespan. If we're going to extend our lifespan, then we would also have to figure out a way to keep our bodies eternally young. In the past decade or so, a shift has occurred in science encouraging us to view aging as a disease that can be cured. Aubrey de Grey is a biomedical gerontologist who believes in this same idea. The English research scientist believes that people who are alive today could end up living for a thousand years. But many say that his ideas are extreme. His study is aimed at combating the harmful byproducts of metabolism. In other words, he believes that by figuring out a way for cells to completely dispose of a waste in a manner that doesn't cause cellular damage or decay is part of the key to longevity. However, because we have a poor understanding of how metabolism really works, our efforts remain crude and decay races through our bodies faster than treatments can keep up. But technology could advance quickly and put us within striking distance of extending human life. But herein lies another problem. It is the disbelief of scientists that we cannot live longer than our current lifespan of 115 years that stops the progression of such science. 
In fact, it would appear that the traditional emotional need to accept our own mortality has generated a pro-aging trance, which is hobbling even the best scientists from pursuing the enterprise with the focus and attention that it demands. There are still drugs being invented every day with the intention of slowing down the aging process and curing diseases. In fact, there is a recent study that has proven to be a powerful anti-aging strategy in mice. This same thing is about to be tested on humans. There are cells in our bodies that are referred to as zombie cells. There is a process in living creatures called mitosis, where once a cell copies all its DNA, it then divides into two new cells. Cells must divide for living things to grow. However, these senescent or zombie cells are old cells that will not divide and they will not die either. This discovery all began with a research scientist by the name of Jean Van Der Sen. He was working with genetically engineered mice to study the abnormal number of chromosomes in a cell and how it relates to cancer. His mice were aging quickly, losing their hair, and their eyes were glazed over with cataracts far before their time. It took him years to figure out why this was happening. He then got the idea of trying to kill off these zombie cells and try to determine if this could prevent the premature descent into old age of these engineered mice. In 2011, he and his team found that by eliminating these senescent cells, that it forestalled many of the ravages of age. Senescence is the gradual deterioration of function which is characteristic of most complex life forms. Currently, there are drugs based on small molecules called senolytics, which are designed to eliminate these zombie cells which refuse to die. This is a good thing, because such defective senescent cells persist to emit harmful chemicals that damage other healthy cells and cause inflammation, a process that is one of the basic mechanisms of aging. But this is only a small part of the process. While some scientists are optimistic, there are others that say that we would have to alter so many genes that it could take generations before any significant breakthrough would occur. And that is where artificial intelligence might come in. The solution to combating cell aging may lie with artificial intelligence. As AI continues to advance, there is a very good chance that it could solve the complex problems concerning the human lifespan and the aging process. Currently, there are artificial intelligence algorithms that are studying the aging process and looking for ways to reverse any process that could be damaging to our cells and our bodies. Artificial intelligence could also end up becoming part of our bodies, programming our cells to correct and reverse entropy. But let's say that we do someday find a way to reverse the aging process. The planet will have a global population of 9.5 billion people by the year 2050. Our planet will struggle to sustain that kind of life with our diminishing resources, and people living forever would only compound these problems. And who would get the gift of eternal life? It certainly wouldn't be everyone. It would possibly be reserved for people like doctors or scientists. There are probably many people who want to live forever, but there are likely many people who are happy with the idea of finally resting in peace. It leaves us with one interesting question. Would you really want to live forever? It seems inevitable that in the future, if we survive long enough as a species, we will get to make that decision.